On the cold winter night of March 5, 1770, an angry mob hurls snowballs at nervous sentries guarding a customs house. Suddenly, there's the blast of a musket. More shots follow. After the last musket is fired, five colonists lie dead in what the Sons of Liberty will dub the Boston Massacre. With the Boston Massacre, tensions escalated dramatically because until this point, it still had been largely a political argument. Now, it's a matter of a show of force. Now, people have died. There is much more at stake than there had been before. Boston's colonial leaders put the Redcoat soldiers on trial for murder. The lawyer defending the soldiers is a surprising choice, John Adams, one of the leading voices of discontent. These men, loyal servants of the crown. He thought that uh, it was critical uh, to uphold the rights of the accused uh, as a sacred uh, traditional British liberty. It is our duty and our obligation to look out for the mother country. And also to prove to the mother country that the American people was not one big lynch mob. Besides seeing their acquittal as a matter of justice, it's hoped it will also calm the friction in Boston. John Adams made a very plausible argument that the British soldiers who fired in the crowd were firing in self-defense. Adams also stacks the deck by packing the jury with loyalists. The verdict is handed down. Your Grace, we find the defendants not guilty. The verdict enrages many patriots, but it does the trick of pacifying British officials. Parliament even repeals some of their taxes, and America and Britain step back from the brink of an escalating conflict. But British authority continues to collide with colonial protest. In Narragansett Bay, Rhode Island, the British custom ship Gaspé pursues a colonial ship suspected of smuggling. The Gaspé's commander is Lieutenant William Duddingston. His job is to enforce Britain's commerce laws, making him Rhode Island's most detested imperial agent. We have not gotten what I demand by the time we reach... William Duddingston is a great object lesson in overreach in law enforcement. He decided to stop just about any ship for any reason. Americans were offended by this, in particular Rhode Islanders. Before Parliament started levying their slew of new taxes, Rhode Island merchants had been bringing in all sorts of goods duty-free. And Lieutenant Duddingston has made it his personal crusade to stop them. But on this day, he makes a critical mistake. In his zeal to nab another smuggler for the crown, he runs the Gaspé aground off the Rhode Island coast. It'll be nine hours before the tide comes in and frees the ship. That evening, the news reaches wealthy merchant John Brown, and it makes his blood boil. He has a fleet of ships. The British are infringing upon his right to trade. Duddingston has made it his crusade to go after Brown, and he's hurting Brown's business. Brown's looking for a little payback. 